Welcome to LSC, it's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Today I have with me Michelle Vini, a former basketball player at Phoebus High School. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, glad to have you here. I know we tried to hook up and then you went out of town for the holidays and everything, but we yes. did get together finally. But you grew up in Hampton. Yes, that's correct. Whereabouts in Hampton did you grow up? Um, North Phoebus townhouses. Okay. Um, now, but you also started playing ball at a very, very young age. Very yes. unusual. Yes, very young. I'm actually um, the youngest child. I have two older brothers, and so I just tried to keep up with them. Yeah. Um, so how you, old were you when you started playing basketball? Then? I was five. Five years old? I was five. Did you play against your brothers? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did they cut you any slack? No, not at all. Well, that probably is a good thing. Uh, they made me better. Yeah, but had to make you better. So in growing up, now, where did you you play ball? Um, started off at North Phoebus Townhouses. There is a community center in North Phoebus, North Phoebus Community Center. Right, yes. And um, as a child, we that was, you know, the funnest place to go because you could do more than just basketball there. You could do volleyball. They had family nights, uh, play pool, play tennis in the back. They had a park in the back. So it was something positive, something fun, and just kind of walking around on the sidewalk, you know. Right. Um, were, were there a lot of uh, other young ladies besides you that, that went there and played Ball it wasn't a lot of girls. It was just one. Um, my best friend, Natasha Jones, she played with me. Right. And um, not many would play basketball. Right. But they would go to the community center, and right. they were my friends, and they would support us when we played. Right. Yeah. But see, to play basketball at that age, mm -hmm. to me, is just it's you know unusual for a young lady. Yeah. Not saying that's not a good thing. But. I remember when I made my first shot. <laughs> I do. I do. My Aunt Michelle actually was watching me, and I was trying and trying. I was one of those people that just never gave up, and I was right. very small. So, you know, when I shot it and it went in, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and after that, I was just hooked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. And then after, uh, when you were there and you played on uh, organized teams? Yes. We actually had um, Mr. Duval. He was a great leader when we were there. And he organized some rec teams for us. And they actually let me play with the boys because we didn't have enough girls, girls to right. play. Um, so I would play with the boys team. We would play against local community centers like Lincoln Park. Um, West Hampton wasn't around then, um, but any of the other community centers, they would come over and we would play, and I would hang right with them. Hey, yeah. so you learned early on with, against your brothers and all. Right. And then after you got older, you went to Spratly Middle School. Yes. And then what happened over there? Well, that was the first opportunity to actually play on an all-girls team. And um, I played in the sixth grade. And um, I remember trying out, Coach Marie was the coach, and I went to tryouts, and she looked at me, and a little short thing. Yeah, she said, you here to try out? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. You know, yes, ma'am. And I played hard. You know, I played with a lot of heart. And I made the team. And I played sixth and seventh grade for Spratly Middle School. Okay. And you always were a point guard? Always. Now, is that something that your, your brothers helped you with? Because then you become the quarterback on the team. Right. How did you develop your your mm -hmm. techniques and all that? I know from your coaches, but did you have help from your brothers too? I did. Well, pretty much when we played at the rec center, there was no position. Right. It was a lot of 21 pickup games, and you just get the ball wherever you could. And like I said, the guys didn't take it easy on me. But when I played for an organized team, um, because of my height, naturally, that just became my position. Right. And um, You definitely weren't the center. Yeah, they wouldn't be the center. <laughs> of the coach. So the coach would say, okay, you're going to bring the ball up the floor. And slowly, Coach Marie at Spratly, she started. And Miss Green, she was a teacher, a math teacher at Spratly. They would tell me, this is how you do it. Um, bringing it up, you know, you first look to pass and then you look to shoot. Skills like that. And my teammates were always very supportive. Okay. Yes. Now, also developing the skills to handle the ball. Mm -hmm. Did you do a lot of that on your own that, besides practice? I yeah. mean, you know, not during practice, but that your was time. actually my time because becoming a good ball handler just means you got to become comfortable with the ball. I would be walking around my house with the ball. My mom would, I would drive my mom crazy. <laughs> Stop dribbling the ball. Yeah. Around the neighborhood. I actually, me and my brother decided to get some roller skates. We actually used to dribble while skating around the neighborhood. And if I said, if I could dribble on skates, well, I can dribble while I'm walking and running, and that's a lot easier. Well, how, did, and you also work, work on your left hand, your, your off hand? Both, yes. Uh, right hand was always stronger, but left hand, right hand, I, 
I used to try a lot of crossovers and different right. stuff like that, just a lot of moves. We watched N1 basketball back then, and so I used to always want to have the best crossover. So to me, it was fun, but I guess I didn't realize I was building skills that were going to help me later on. Right. Yes. Also, being small, it's harder for somebody bigger to guard you. Definitely. And I'm assuming you're, you, you're a little quick, too, right? Yes, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> so, okay, and then you went through uh, just sixth and seventh grade at JV's, I mean, at uh, middle school in Sprantley, but mm -hmm. then you went to Phoebus as an eighth grader and played the JV. Yes, and just about your whole team went. Just about. Um, I can remember a few names. You know, all of us that played there, we moved on to Phoebus, except for one young lady. She did end up going to Hampton because right. of zone changes and stuff. Uh, but the majority of us went to Phoebus and played JV as eighth graders. So here's a unit that played at sixth and seventh grade, and then you go up there as a unit. How, how, what kind of success did you have on the JVs? Um, we had good success. Our coach was Tanya Viles. She was, um, worked at Phoebus High School, right. and she was tough. Coming from middle school to you know <laughs> high school, she didn't cut us one bit of slack. And I um, remember a lot of running, and you know it was a change because you right. know high school, you play all the time. Right. Rec league, you play that one season. So I said, in the summer, we also played. So coming on JV, because we all knew each other and played together, we were successful. We were wow. very successful. And see, that's got, that's got to have helped you throughout the career, and, and we're mm -hmm. going to talk a little bit about that. But always playing uh, the point guard, and from, from the, the almost the group from, the, from Sprantley stayed together. Mm -hmm. You went to, to, uh, up to uh, Phoebus. Mm -hmm. Then, as a ninth grader, you become a starter right. as a freshman. Right. Now, there's juniors and seniors on that team. That's correct. How did they help you? Uh, well, as I played JV, it was already players there. We were her, the coach was Coach Liz Mears, right. and we I were afraid Liz. of her. We were afraid <laughs> of Coach Liz, and we would sit and we would watch the varsity practice, and it was tough. And right. we understood that there was an expectation that JV right. and varsity is two different ball games. And so it was seniors there, like Crystal Clary, who I watched play, and I understood that if you wanted to play this, you just had to play hard. Well, to talk a little bit about Crystal, because you, you kind of yeah. said, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. But yeah. what kind of a ball player was Crystal? Crystal was the truth. Crystal played through anything. Broke ankle, broke leg, sick. Because some people, they get sick, they say, I can't make it to practice. But she played through anything, and I would watch that. And in the games, she was just ruthless. She would do whatever it takes for a team to win, and she was a great leader. So I'm, I'm a sponge. I was absorbing and watching her. She was a role model, everything she did. And I looked up to her, you right. know. I looked up to her a lot. And so as I came on, she left, but there were seniors there that she played with, and she probably rubbed off on them because they were great leaders to me as well. Right. Like Shanika Jackson, who went on to play at University of North Carolina's Greenboro's. She's right. now the head coach at Phoebus, JV. And she was, um, you know, would help me, guide me. If I messed up a lot as a, as a well, freshman. Well, it's a freshman, you're going to. I mean, yes. it's a, cause you've gone from a level where the, the level of competition in is good, and, in, and now it's getting better. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're playing in the Peninsula District, and you know, you're playing against some pretty good teams. Well, you know, Hampton was the dynasty around that time. They were right. going undefeated, winning state championships, and that was our rival. But we still played them with, with heart, you know. Nobody was scared or nothing. You know? so. <laughs> that tickles me that, that you guys were afraid of Liz Bears. That just yeah. tickles me to Dickens. <laughs> yeah, she All was right, tough. now, but mm -hmm. and then you you had some great success yes. as a junior and a senior. Mm -hmm. You guys and Phoebus girls had not gone to the regionals in in years. Right. It and had been a while because when I came up in ninth and tenth, we played for Tiffany Everett. Um, and then my junior year, uh, you know, she had passed away. Right. My junior year, we got Barbara Burgess. And right. um, Barbara, you know, she, she took on that tough job as us losing a coach. And she came right in, and that's the year we won regionals as a junior. Um, we were number five, and we beat the number four team. And you know, four and five is the toughest that, game. That's the toughest game because mm -hmm. that's you're evenly matched. Yeah. Well, the Daily Press didn't pick us to win. I remember they said, "Well, we'll probably be seeing Minchville and whoever in the next game." And they didn't. They weren't a pick. They weren't a vote for us. So I remember that. <laughs> so for two years, then junior and senior, you guys made it through the regionals. We made it through the regionals, and right. um, we went on to play further. We didn't win the districts, but we went on to play further. But that was progress for us. It's, right. It's a process, one step at a time. We right. were moving up the ladder. Yeah. Okay, then you graduate. I graduate. And you go to CNU. Yes. Now, CNU, we're talking 
much bigger competition, yeah. <laughs> much tougher. Definitely. Right? But you become a starter. Yes. Who was your coach up there? Carolyn Hunter. Carolyn Hunter. And, you know, that wasn't easy because I had a lot of knee injuries. Um, I actually tore my meniscus my senior year. And um, it was a lot of bigger colleges I was hoping to go to, but you know, as you hurt something, it's harder to. So Carolyn, I went over to visit and she said, we'll rehab that knee and you come in and you play hard, you'll be starting. And um, over the summer, I just never quit. And I rehabbed and my knee got stronger. And by the time the freshman year started, I was starting for Crispin Newport University. Four years started. Four years, yes. Talk about that experience, because now you're talking different competition. Now we're talking about from just running up and down the court, playing hard, trying to be everywhere, to slow it down and thank the game of basketball. Okay. See, you can't just run up and down the court. You know, you can have the toughest defense, you know, but what about offense? Can you execute? A lot of times you just see a lot of running gun basketball. Carolyn Hunter taught us how to slow it down, think the game, work smarter, not harder than your opponent. Right. It took me, I'll tell you, a couple years to become the point guard she needed me to be. Oh, yeah, I thought that I was a good point this guard is a, Yeah, this yeah. is a different kind of a point guard than you were yeah. before. Yes. Because now you're thinking rather than reacting. Yes. She, I mean, had to control the floor. Like I said, first look the pass, then look the shoot. But when people weren't in their right spot, I had to tell them where to be. Now, coming in as a freshman and I'm starting, a senior doesn't want me to tell them where to be. <laughs> but I had one of those attitudes where if we want to win, this is what you're going to do. And, um, you know, I would control the floor. I would be the general. But I still would mess up a lot. Once again, I was a freshman. And as I went on, by the time I was a junior at CNU, I was what she wanted me to be. And I never left the floor. And, you know, I was the general. Wow. Talk a little bit about the, the success you had there and maybe some of the teammates that you had there mm -hmm. at, at CNU. Well, um, we always had good, good records there. Um, we had a tough year my first year, but that next year we had just sophomores and freshmen. We only had about seven girls. That's when we had Chelsea Swears come along. Right. And uh, I don't know if you're know, familiar with Chelsea, um, but she, as a freshman, was an All-American, um, and she was Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year as a freshman in college. She would shoot the lights out the gym. And I was a point guard. I was the distributor. You go get her to the so ball. So <laughs> they would all follow me, and then, boom, she would be wide open. And I was actually, when they came in, as a sophomore, we didn't have any more seniors. So I became the captain. And um, Calandra Rawlins, Jessica Carmen, they became the captains with me. And we led those freshmen. We told them exactly what they were going to do and what they weren't going to do. And they listened. And like I said, I was one of those tough people where, you know, they listened. But I knew how to talk to people because as a leader right. and as a captain, you got to talk to each player differently. And um, some people I could just yell at and say, get it done. And other people I would say, one-on-one, -on -one, come on over here right. and do that. So that, we had success. And, and that's what a coach would do. Right. <laughs> he said, you're the coach on the floor. Yeah, we had a lot of success. With my junior year, um, we actually won the championship. We won the USA South Conference. We went on to the NCAAs. We won the first round. We... We lost in the second round, one game away from the Sweet 16. And uh -huh. I got my first ring with Christopher Newport University. So I was very proud then. Oh, I'm sure. I was very proud. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, let's, uh, then you, 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 after four years, you graduate, get a degree in math. Mathematics, yes. Yeah. But we're talking now, you graduate. When did, what year, uh, year did you graduate? 2000? December of 2008. And then you had a baby. Yes. Yeah, and then six right. weeks later, you go teaching. Six weeks later. I didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in ball. You know, I got injured. But you had a little baby six weeks later. And you're over at Sims the Middle School. Yeah, that was my start. And I'm still there. Sims took me in, showed me the ropes, and took very good care of me. All uh, right. Well, let's talk a little right. bit about the spoken word. Okay. So um, tell me exactly what it is. What it is. And, yeah. What, what you, because, because of this, uh -huh. you became one of the top 10 teachers of the year. Yes, uh, spoken word is a way to express yourself through poetry, through any way you want to. Uh, it's a form of poetry. And um, throughout basketball and all that, I always wrote, you know, and I would do things at the college and perform and stuff like that. But at um, Sims, you see a lot of things in the school system, some things you want to change, right. some things that's already good. So I would, you know, write and I decided to, for the students, put on a um, SOL pep rally, me and another teacher. We decided to put together a pep rally that would motivate the students for the SOL. And at that pep rally, I did some spoken word. 
at staff meetings. I do spoken word, and it's all inspirational, motivational, just something to get students pumped up and get them going. <laughs> yeah, so the teachers too. <laughs> at Sims, I performed spoken word for the teachers. I performed it for the students. I performed it at a talent show. I even now have a, a team of students that I put together called Warriors because we fight for what's right. And those students are now practicing spoken word and poetry after school as a little club. Wow. Yes. Talk a little bit about this the magazine that uh, did the top The Hampton Rose Man. Yes, um, I got an email, email from my uh, principal and she, uh, she sent it out to the school. She did nominate it for Hampton Rose Magazine, top 10 teachers, and um, got everyone in the school to vote and the community voted and stuff like that. And, I didn't think I was gonna win. You know, I was doing, <laughs> I was doing what I love to do. But it came back. You know, you won. You were, you were voted Hampton Roads top ten teachers out of the in the Hampton Roads magazine. And that's out of a lot of different cities in Hampton Roads. And so that that made me feel very good that people see what you're doing, and then they reward you for that. Um, but I don't, at the end of the day, do it for the rewards. But it was nice to be in a magazine. My family well, and very being proud. recognized for for some of the contributions yes. you're doing. Yes. Right. Uh, you and I have a little bit of a connection here. Uh -huh. I was at Sims the first year it was open. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. So, but, uh, but anyway, doing all this stuff, and we're going to kind of wrap this thing up. Because this has been wonderful. I've got mm -hmm. some information I didn't know about. Yeah. Uh, how. All of this is spoken word and all with athletics and academics. Mm -hmm. How would you talk to another young lady who's just beginning? Okay. What, would, what would you impart to her? Ag academics and athletics. Well, right. it's, uh, they, they go hand in hand. Okay, as a teacher, and I'm also a coach, academics comes first. In the classroom, however you are in the classroom, that's how you're going to be on the court or on the field or wherever. If you're lazy in the classroom, eventually you'll be lazy on the field. You right. work hard in the classroom, you do what you're supposed to do. Well, for one, you'll never have to leave the court or the field because you'll have the grades to carry on. But what happens when you go to college like I did, I had knee problems, I had a backup plan, I got my degree in math. So I could teach or I could coach, I had options. But what happens when your grades aren't good and you tear your meniscus or you break your knee, what are you gonna do now? Well, you gotta have it up here. And right. so you are more successful when you can put academics first and then let athletics follow. And then when people see that and coaches see that and that character is built, you, are, you become more of an athlete that people want. So you have to study first. You know, first of all, if you get smart in the classroom, you'll play smart on the court. Thank you. And that's, <laughs> you know, because you have to think, like I said, think the game. It's not a game where you can just run up and down. You got to see, you got to be able to read the defense, read the offense. That takes wits. So every piece from math to science to social studies, language arts to even PE and health, art, technology, every class is important and every part is like a crucial ingredient. I always say building a great basketball team is like baking a cake. You know. You gotta have the right ingredient. Every <laughs> and every player is a crucial ingredient. Even right. the player that dev never gets in. If you're waving your towel and cheering on your teammate, I guarantee you that teammate needs you. Absolutely. And so you're a key ingredient to success. Hmm. Yes. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. I want to thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Michelle Vini. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Until next time. <laughs>